Welcome back to the Storycraft Society. This week we're gonna be doing a little bit different of a video where I'm gonna be reviewing the best Dungeons and Dragons book I've ever bought. Let's get after it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin, and this is the Storycraft Society, and this is gonna be the first review video I've ever done on the channel, and the whole catalyst for me making this video is buying this beauty right here. For longtime viewers of the channel, I've always liked to have a collection of books visible in my intros that if people paid attention to them, awesome, but if not, I got to showcase some of the books that I really love, and the one that's on top of them right now, and I think for a long time to come, is Spectacular Settlements by Nord Games. The first thing I'm gonna say is this is not a paid ad. Nord Games did not get in contact with me. I bought it with my own money because it excited me and I thought that it could be a good product and I was so shocked by how good it was that I felt like I needed to make this video. Seriously though, Nord Games, if you are looking to have a YouTuber review more of your products, definitely hit me up. I would be so stoked to review your product catalog. Everything looks amazing. So now with this review video, I'm gonna break it down in three ways as to why I think this is the best book for D&D I've ever bought. The first one is gonna be an overview. I'm gonna go through the table of contents. I'm gonna give you kind of a look at the book and show you what you're gonna be getting if you buy this product. The second thing is gonna be why this book I think is essential for newer DMs. The third thing is going to be why this book is so useful for advanced DMs like me. All three of those things will be time stamped in the description below. So if you wanna go down and just fast forward to the section that you think is more pertinent to you, you can go ahead and do that. And I will also link where you can go pick this book up. Like I said, I'm not gonna get any kind of a commission or anything on it like that. And I just hope that I can add such a cool tool to your arsenal. So let's get into it. We're gonna go into step one of this review, which is gonna be an overview of the book. Let's go. All right, so let's crack this thing open. It says that it is the definitive guide to creating rich and diverse settlements for storytelling and fantasy role-playing games. I have no complaints with that title there. So when we open it up, the first thing to mention, it is 468 pages of gorgeous color. The quality of the actual construction of the book or the making of the book is so good. We flip open and we're going to jump to the table of contents. We can see that there's a foreword, there's an introduction, then there are a bunch of different types of settlements. So the smallest being trading posts, then you have villages, towns, cities, capitals, and fortresses. All of those are gonna be super useful in generating different size settlements. Really, really neat. I'm gonna get into that here in a minute. Then it goes on to interesting NPCs. It's got a whole bag of really interesting NPCs that you can just pluck one out of the book and drop it into your game with no issue. Then we go into our appendices, which we've got location information, encounters, rumors, and useful tables. The useful tables that they included in this are completely unnecessary and so useful. I, I know they call them useful tables. They're like random roll tables and stuff. Why they put them in here, I don't know, but they're really good and I will probably use them all the time. So I'm not gonna go through every single page of the book, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dive in to just the trading post section. So let's jump into that. So at the beginning of the trading post section, you have a little bit of a blurb on flavor text that will get you into the mood for how you can set up a trading post to feel. I love when books do that because that just always gets me in the mood for what I'm creating. That moves on to an overview of the chapter where it's going to show you the step-by-step -step process that they're going to be giving you over the next couple of pages on how to flesh out your trading post. Step one is basic information. Step two is community. Step three is points of interest. And then there's extra intrigue that's added. All of that is gonna be given to you clearly. And then it's time to dive into step one. So step one is gonna run you through a bunch of modifiers and qualifiers on how to really flesh out your super awesome trading post that you're working on, right? So it's going to start with origin. How did the trading post come to be? Then specialty, the age, the condition, the visitor traffic. How many people are coming to this trading post, right? Size, 
And then lastly, the environment. That moves on to community. It's now talking about resident population, demographics, law enforcement, leadership, population wealth, crime. And all of these so far give you random roll tables so you can just randomly generate a village if you want. But also you can really go in and pick what you want if you're trying to use that as a creative booster. Next it goes to step three, which is all about points of interest. That's gonna be things like shops and places of worship and services that this place offers. All very useful to give you ideas on what you're gonna be doing potentially. In the middle is an interesting one, quality. And I thought that this was just genius writing. What kind of quality do your players find when they visit this trading post compared to if they went to another trading post or what the expectation of this trading post would be? So for example, maybe everybody talks like this is a really great place, but when the players find it, it's in poor condition. That's so awesome. So then we move on to extra intrigue. This is gonna be recent history and politics and events, opportunities, weather, danger level and type. All of that is so, so useful. And now that you've gone through step-by-step step, all of those things, you're gonna have a really real feeling trading post that you can easily drop into any world. So now we're gonna move on to the next thing, which I think is actually what makes this go from like, an eight out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. They then give you from page 26, oh, wait, page. 43 pre-generated trading posts. So if you're having an issue coming up with something, you can go in and flip through all of these pre-generated ones to come up with one to just easily pick up and drop into your game. They all fit down in like two or three pages, super easy to read. Every single one comes with their own map. That's a game changer. I just think that that's so awesome. And then it also gives you a history of the little village that you can either use or change. There's actually a blurb in the beginning of the book that tells you to feel free to change and manipulate anything in this book that you want, which is any D&D book, but it's always nice when the publisher uh, or the writer gives you that option clearly stated. So that's what you're gonna get in every single chapter. This is just the smallest chapter, which is the trading posts, but each chapter gets progressively bigger, going from villages to towns towns, to cities, to capitals. And another thing that's really worth mentioning is I kind of struggled with that in my game where I was thinking cities and capitals are kind of the same thing, but that idea of a city being slightly smaller than a capital was enough to really blow my mind and make my world building get better just in that one little simple tip. So let's move on to our next thing, which is why I think newer DMs are going to just absolutely need this book. I'm making a big, bold statement. I think that this is the first book that a new DM should buy after they have the Player's Handbook, the Monster Manual, and the DMG. That's gonna be for three reasons. The first reason is simple. All the pre-built settlements in here. It's so useful for a new DM who gets overwhelmed by the process of thinking out into the ether and creating something out of nothing that you can just grab a city or a settlement or a town out of here, drop it into your game, easy, it's done, it's over. Number two, the worksheets are going to be so useful for a new DM. It's like making a character sheet for your towns and villages. That way when you make one and you play another game for a while and you come back, you can pull that worksheet out and immediately go, ah, this is where I was when I left off. I think they are so useful for anybody, but particularly for a new DM. The third and final thing that I think will make this such an important book for new DMs is this section called Key Settlement Info. And basically what it does is it's just a very simple one paragraph each and a couple of bullet points breakdowns for what makes a trading post different from a village, from a town, from a city, from a capital, and from a fortress. All of those things broken down into really simple concepts and then important ideas for you to consider with each. So for example, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but with the trading posts, the important ideas is it's a small location focused heavily on hospitality and trade, and then potentially remote, because that's what a trading post is. It's supposed to be a place where lots of different places can meet to trade and all that sort of thing. So really useful section of this book. So let's move on to what the advanced DM will get out of this book.
So for the advanced DM, this book brings in a bunch of more complex and intricate things to think about that I as a world builder hadn't thought about before I started reading this book. Um, so we're gonna break those down into another three things. So the first thing is they put these little info boxes into each section and there's a lot of them. So this one, for example, says, how does age modify visitor traffic? That's a level of complexity that when I'm building a trading post in my setting, I just would never think about. And what it basically says is that trading posts thrive off of reputation. So the longer a trading post has been around, the longer it has a chance to build a reputation, therefore the more popular it should be, theoretically, right? Those little boxes just get my creative juices flowing in a way that I just don't think that they have from any other resource. Number two, in each section, they give you all these random roll tables to figure things out. So for example, age has a random roll table here that it could go anywhere from an age of being recent, that it was established within the past year to established, mature, old, ancient, and unknown that it's been there for so long that no one really knows when it was built. And I think that what makes those random roll tables so good for the advanced DM is not necessarily that I'm going to be randomly rolling these things to figure out what I need for my trading post, right? I'm gonna just go and look at that random chart and decide which one of those modifiers fits my idea, the picture that I have in my head, better. If you're a new DM, roll, and it's gonna give you these complex and creative and interesting settlements that you wouldn't necessarily come up with. But for an advanced DM, I'm gonna pick the one that fits the best and then use that to modify things later, which brings me on to number three, and this is definitely the coolest one. All of the tables, or most of them at least, seem to modify later tables to really make certain things feel more intricate and like the cogs are all working together. So for example, since age affects visitor traffic, if I decide that this trading post, its age is unknown, that gives me a plus four to my visitor traffic roll, which now when I go to my visitor roll, I'm gonna be rolling a D20 and know that if I would normally roll a 14, that would actually be an 18. And then that gets even better because now when I look and now I have an 18 for my visitor traffic, which is droves, there are lots of new faces on a regular basis. I now have a plus three to my size roll and a minus one to my crime roll because the more people, the harder it is for crime to operate. You know, they're not operating in the shadows. It's a much more populated area. And the book just goes on and on and on like this, which blows my mind every time I look at it and talk about it. If you think that this is bad, try being one of my friends. I've been literally on this rant since I bought this book and they are so sick of hearing about it. So now I guess I'm making you guys hear about it. Sorry, I'm really excited. There you have it, the first Storycraft Society review is in the books. Definitely let me know down in the comments below if you liked this video, if you want to see more videos like this where I go over products that get me all excited. Just remember, if you are interested in picking this book up, I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you like this video, definitely leave me a like down below. Leave me a comment on whether you'd want to see more of these review videos or not. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely do that. And if you're new to the channel, typically what we're doing is making terrain that we're going to incorporate into to our storytelling. So if that sounds like content that you're interested in, definitely we would love to have you every week. Hit that notification bell if you wanna know when our videos go live every week, which is Thursday Eastern Standard Time at noon. And definitely share this video with somebody that you think would enjoy seeing it. Any reach that I can get, I would greatly appreciate. All the success on the channel so far has been awesome and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. So that's all I've got for this week's video. Best book I've ever bought for D&D. Can't talk it up enough. So stoked. We'll see y'all next week.